Okay. Um, uh, I discussed the, the general concept of uh, revelation as the truth of everything. And in this sense, uh, all beings are one reality, and that reality is reflection of divine attributes. Now we want to go to another level of discussion of this same concept of revelation. And here the concept of revelation uh, becomes a binary concept. Namely, it requires two aspects of reality. So reality takes this dual character. <clears throat> In the very first lines of Persian Bayan, the Bob refers to this point when he says that God has revealed himself to everything and has therefore has invested, deposited the sign of his knowledge, of his recognition in the reality of everything. But he says that this sign is nothing but the uh, inaccessibility of God. Namely, the sign that God can never be recognized. The only sign of recognition of God that has been revealed to everything, that has been deposited in everything, is the inability, incapacity of everything to recognize God. And then he continues to discuss that for uh, this reason, it would be through the reflection of God in this world, which becomes the truth of the prophets or primal will, uh, that God now deposits, reveals the sign of this primal will, this reflection of God, not the truth of God itself. Um, deposits the signs of recognition of this primal will in everything so that everything would know that this primal will is the first and is the last, is the hidden and is the manifest. So the point is that we can know God, but not the essence of God, but only the reflection of God in this world. And the reflection of God becomes the truth of the prophets of God. And in another sense, it is the truth of ourselves, which is also the sign of re uh, revelation of God. But this is all that we can know of God. The truth of God we cannot know. But in order to explain that, he says something which is present in all writings of the Bab, whether late writings or earlier writings. He says that God reveals himself to things on the basis of the capacity and reality of that thing. So revelation is always revelation of, I mean, it requires two things. One is the one which is revealing itself. One is the receptive that uh, receives that revelation. So if you take the concept of the sun and the mirror, the sun is revealing itself, and it's going to be revealed and reflected in the mirror. But then... The way the sun is going to be reflected in the mirror depends on the capacity and characteristics of the mirror itself. So if the mirror is red, or if the mirror is yellow, or if the mirror is circular or in the form of triangular or other things, the way that sun is going to be reflected becomes different. And that's why the Bob says that therefore, although everything is reflection of God, everything is revelation of God, the truth of God, essence of God is supremely inaccessible. It does not descend. Things do not become God, the, the reality of God. They become reflection of God, but not reality of God. Why? Because revelation is always revelation in this case of God, but on the basis of the capacity and the limits and the characteristics of the thing which receives that revelation. And for that reason, the reflection that you would have is different from the truth of the sun. So it indicates the sun, but to the level 
to the extent of the capacity of the thing itself. This is very, very important to remember. It is a fundamental philosophical, theological premise of all his writings, all his discussions. So the truth of everything is revelation of God, is reflection of God. But at the same time, for everything, there is two aspects. One aspect is the image of God, which is being reflected. The other is the characteristics of that thing itself. And therefore, the ultimate reflection becomes interaction of the two. Namely, the image which appears becomes product of the interaction of these two. Now, discussing the creation of things by God, one of the most frequently discussed topics in the writings of the Bab is that everything in order to be created, it has to go through seven stages, seven stages of creation. These seven stages are three and four. So the first three are the minimum conditions of the possibility of anything to be is very important. The words that the Bab used, I mentioned the original word, mashiyat irade qadar. In Gate of the Heart, I have translated them as will, namely primal will, will, namely will of God, is the first stage. The second stage I have translated as determination. And the third stage, which is normally translated as predestination, I translated it as destiny. So you have will, determination, destiny. In explanation of these stages, the Bob makes the first and the second equivalent of existence and essence. Existence is the will, namely is divine effulgence, divine revelation. Nothing exists without divine revelation, without divine will. Everything that happens is by divine will. The second stage, which is reflected in the form of essence, this refers to the capacities, characteristics of things, and therefore the choices. And this becomes the basis of freedom and choices for action. From the point of view of the Bob, nothing happens if existence and essence would not come together. So existence and essence, if they are separate from each other, still there is no reality. For reality, for anything to be, existence and essence should be now linked and united together. This linking and unity is destiny. Qadar. The word qadar really, if you translate correctly, means measure, means to the extent, to the degree. But normally it is understood as predestination. And in the pre-Babi imagination of these ideas, the word qadar, that I translate as destiny, usually has been understood as implying that there is no freedom. Everything is predetermined by God. The Bible makes this completely reversed. Everything that happens is simultaneously, simultaneously because the will of God and the choices of things in accordance with their essence and reality. Nothing happens without both of them coming together and both of them being true. And the coming together of both of them becomes destiny. By the word, his name Bob, the Bob, uh, in his writings becomes symbol of this same fact and so many other facts related to that. Namely, Bob consists of two Bs and one A. He says the first B refers to existence, to the will, to the divine effulgence. The second B refers to the essences of things and the choices of things. And the letter A, which in Arabic Persian is one vertical line, is what connects these two Bs together. So the word Bob becomes the symbol of the reality of 
everything. Previously, I mentioned very briefly that the prophet of God and also everything has two aspects, one divinity, one servitude. You remember that? Now, divinity is this first part, is the first B, namely the will, the divine effulgence, the its existence, it's from God. And the essences of things becomes the servitude. And the Bob becomes unity of divinity and servitude, unity of existence and essence, becomes realization of destiny. And of course, the Bob means a gate. The concept of gate means that something which is outside connects now to something which is inside. The outside becomes inside. The whole point is that our phenomenal existence, which is our servitude, our characteristics which separates us from each other. My name is Nader and it's different from your names. My characteristics is where I'm born, my gender, my ethnicity, my class, uh, my age, all these things is different from you guys. And we are different from trees and mountains. These are related to our essences, to our servitude. Um, so we all have this phenomenal existence which is defined by my reality as separate from other things. From the point of view of the Bob, however, the truth of all of us is one and the same. That's our divinity. That's reflection of God within all of us. And so the mystical spiritual journey, mystical spiritual consciousness is a journey that we move from phenomenal existence that I'm solid and separate and independent to recognition of the fact that everything is interconnected, everything is one, and that I'm part of this total unity. So servitude connects itself to divinity. Divinity is our spiritual truth. So purpose of a spiritual, theological development is that we discover our spiritual truth, realize our spiritual truth. That's the entire purpose of religion and, and life, really. And so the concept of the Bob, everything is the Bob. And everything is a process of discovery of the infinite within the finite. I am a finite, I'm a servitude, I'm a specific things, different from other things, but my truth is infinite, is God, is reflection of God, is divinity. The point is that I connect to that. This connecting of the finite to, with the infinite of servitude, understanding itself as part of that divinity as its truth and so on. This is really gatehood. And the Bab is this gate. He frequently calls himself Babullah, even in his first book, Commentary on the Surah of Joseph, which apparently it appears as if he's saying his gate to the 12 Imam. Over there also he constantly calls himself Babullah, the gate of God the gate to God. The whole basic point is that the Bab is going to reawaken our understanding of a spiritual truth. And so we would rediscover our own spiritual truth through the love and attraction and the wisdom and insights that the Bab and his words and the love of the Bob is going to create and generate within our own being. At the same time, of course, is the Bob too, he whom God shall make manifest, which we have to discuss that in so much detail later. But the concept of the Bob has all these layers and layers and layers of meaning. It's not just that he's gate to the him whom God shall make manifest. And even that is the gate to him whom God shall make manifest. 
Not by just saying that somebody would come after me, his name is he whom God shall make manifest. No. He's the forerunner of Baha'u'llah through creating of a new culture, of a new set of ideas, of a new set of mystical and spiritual insights through which humanity became ready for the revelation of Baha'u'llah. And this aspect should never be forgotten. When we define the Bab, we recognize that he's an independent manifestation of God. But we also say that he's a foreigner, herald of Baha'u'llah. This is true. But what is more important is to recognize that he is a herald of Baha'u'llah, not by just saying that somebody would come after me. He does that, and, he's, and it is important. But the most important is through ideas that he educates, that he trains, that he spiritualizes his community. And it was because of this that the greatest miracle in the history of religion ever happened. Nearly vast, vast majority of the Babis accepted Baha'u'llah. Never have, something like that never has happened. Even right now, Christians, vast majority of Christians never accepted Prophet Muhammad. Never. Right now there is much more Christians in the world than, than Muslims. This is 100, 14 centuries after so much even military events for conversion of non-Muslims to Islam. The Muslims, vast majority of them did not recognize the Bab. But there is something about the Bab, and it is something about his teaching, his ideas, which I'm going to discuss them hopefully, that he prepared through those ideas, his believers, so that they won't listen to anybody. They didn't care, for, for instance, this leader of the Babi religion, this prominent, this Babi scholar, and so on, whether they are accepting Baha'u'llah or not. The Bab trained them not to do that. And so they practiced this independence of thinking and looking at the only thing that they should look for making a judgment about the truth claim of a prophet of God, which the Bab explains what it is, and ignore everything else. That's what they did, because the Bab educated them in that way. And so vast, vast, major Edward Brown, in his writings, he says that in the early stages of the revelation of Baha'u'llah, more than 99% of the Babis became Baha'i. I, I think he's exaggerating, and probably it is about 95%. But this is earlier stages, and later, of course, it became more. This is a miraculous event. Never something like that has happened. Why? Because it was not just by saying that somebody would come after me. He created a culture, a spiritual culture, a way of looking at religion, at human being, at all these things, a way of searching, a way, a method of search. I would discuss this as under the title of a new culture of expectation, also a new concept of human being and so on later on, and we discuss that. So what we were discussing and suddenly I noted that I have to be much more concise. <laughs> so. We began with the fundamental concept of revelation. At first we saw this concept of revelation meant that the truth of everything is one, and everything is one. Then we noted that the concept of revelation requires revelation in accordance with the capacities and limits of the receptive. And this suddenly created a dualistic concept. Everything has two aspects, divinity and servitude or existence and essence. From the point of view of, of the Bible, of course, the truth, the tr real truth and identity is the divinity, that aspect. This is the exact opposite of everything that humanity so far has looked. In pre-modern philosophies, 
the identity of people was reduced to their social class, where they were born, where their family, gender, religion, these sort of things. And there were all these inequalities on that basis. The modernity tried to question this a little bit. And the concept of human being as human being started to emerge. But it was within a materialistic point of view, and it was within a very narrow political, economic, cultural st structure, which privileged the West over everything else. And therefore, again, in its practices, instead of affirming the unity, made a colonial, a racist, imperialistic worldview. But as, at least it tried to bring this concept of, um, of, of unity of, of people. It was not successful. And because of its failure, then we went to postmodernity, which is right now. And the postmodernity now denies that there is such a thing as a human being. There is, denies that there is such a thing as a universal value. And therefore, identities now has become nothing but gender, but race, but ethnicity, but language, but nation, and so on. And this is the most sophisticated form of philosophical, sociological, anthropological consciousness right now. That when people think of identity, identity of people are things that separate them from each other. The point of view of the Bob and Bahala is the exact opposite of all of these. The truth of everything and everyone, the real identity is something which all we have all in common. That is reflection of divine attributes. It's a spiritual consciousness. And for that reason, if you don't have this spiritual consciousness, then you are going to miss this. And really, if we just have a materialistic consciousness, then there is not much space for, for that unity. That unity is rooted in a spiritual understanding and interpretation of, of reality. Okay, um, now I want to go to Persian Bayan directly. Up to now, whatever I mentioned, you can find in all over the writings of, of the Bab. Now I want to enter Persian Bayan and the revolutionary change made by the Persian Bayan. Persian Bayan takes the same concept of revelation and this paradox of revelation. On the one hand, it means that everything is one. On the other hand, it means this freedom and choice and binary characteristics, this dialogue between God and the receptive element, right? This was the concept of revelation. The Bob takes this concept and now makes it historical Namely, it's not a general statement about God and the world. It is that as well. But the main meaning now becomes something as part of history which changes. And so the worldview that Persian Bayan brings, and this is the first time, is a worldview according to which religion is a living thing and has to change. It grows and changes and takes different forms. Each religion now becomes a revelation of God. And this revelation of God, on the one hand, is the same. Namely, all religions are one and the same. All divine scriptures are one and the same. All prophets of God are one and the same. And at the same time, this revelation is defined in terms of a dialogue between God and humanity. Just as the sun is going to be reflected in the mirror, but on the basis of the characteristics and capacity of this mirror, now humanity becomes that mirror who is advancing and changing because it is a spiritual force, humanity, humanity changes and it takes different stages of development. Now, each revelation of God now, that, that same revelation of God on the basis of capacities and level of development of humanity takes a new form, reflects itself in a new form. This means different religions. This means different cultures. And therefore, progressive revelation, the word that we use so much, becomes the fundamental principle of divine revelation. 
It is because revelation is not just God and it's not revelation of God to, to God. If it was so, then it would be, remain absolute and eternal and unchanging. But it's revelation of God for humanity. But humanity is changing. This mirror doesn't stay the same way. This mirror is made, imagine that you have a mirror. But this mirror itself is historical, namely it takes different shapes, it changes, grows and develops constantly. Every 10 years, it becomes completely transformed. Now the same revelation of the sun in this mirror, therefore each time takes a new form. The revelation becomes historical, becomes dynamic, changes, it becomes living. The word living is very important in the Quran and also in Torah. In Torah, you know, the God is defined always as the living God and is opposed to idols because idols are dead. They don't do anything and they are always in the same fashion, not active. It's a living God, namely it acts, it transforms and on the basis of different situations, acts in different ways. The Quran constantly defines God also as living, Hoval Hayyul Gayyum, for example. He is high and he is the self-subsistence. The Bab takes these names and makes it fundamental principles of religion, of the manifestation of God, of culture, of the word of God. So the scripture of God is a living thing. And because it is living, it grows and develops and takes new forms, new shapes. So Quran, because it was a living thing, now has appeared as Bayan. Bayan is the same Quran, it's not different. Appearance has changed, but the truth is one and the same. This idea becomes the essence of everything Persian Bayan discusses that. But as I mentioned, it's such a revolutionary change, such a transformation of of culture, namely everybody was sure that their religion is the last religion up to the end of the time, the laws of their religion are binding, no change, no nothing, and, and so Bob changed all these things, and it's all because of his concept of revelation. Revelation means, on the one hand, the unity of everything, on the other hand, revelation is a dialogue between God and the receptive element. And that means that in the realm of history, in the realm of civilization, revelation of God takes the form of different religions. Each one of them becomes a revelation on the basis of capacities, characteristics, development of humanity at one stage of its development. In order to explain this, Persian Bayan does so many things. So the concept of destiny now becomes really the characteristic of religion. Each religion becomes product of this will and determination, namely cultures now, humanity now, would have different characteristics with changes and so on. And religion becomes product of this. So religion becomes a dialogue between God and humanity. Previously, religion was something that God absolutely imposed it on people. Doesn't matter what type of people are, what stage of development. What God says is eternally there, up to the day of resurrection. The Bible, as you see, as you'll see, made the day of resurrection historical. The day of resurrection is the day that a new stage of development of humanity, a new spiritual stage of humanity appears. So even the day of resurrection became the, the day of coming of a new uh, spiritual development. But the point is that religion is not for God. If it was for God, it could be absolute and so on. It's not for God. It's a revelation for humanity. But humanity has limitations, has particular stages of development. The purpose of revelation and religion is to realize potentialities of humanity. That means that the form of religion as revelation of God has to be based upon 
the will of God has to appear in terms of the levels, capacities, stage of development of humanity. And therefore, religion becomes a dialogue between God and humanity. The, the beginning of the Babi religion, which the Bab discusses that a number of times in Persian Bayon, is based upon a conversation. Bob knew that he's a prophet according to the Persian Bayon. Persian Bayon says that when manifestation of God is in the womb of the mother, knows that he's the manifestation. He says that he whom God shall make manifest, even in the womb of the mother, or even when his mother is feeding him, by a movement of his finger, he can transform and abrogate the entire uh, concept of religion, all the laws, and, and so on. So for, for, for the Bab, manifestation of God, prophet does not become prophet, doesn't discover that he's a prophet, he knows this in advance. But the Babi religion does not begin at that time. The Babi religion begins when Mullah Hussein, representing humanity, development and preparation of humanity, engages in conversation with the Bab and recognizes the Bab. And therefore, this is the beginning of the Babi religion. One of the most beautiful expressions of this in Persian Bayan is, a, is an unbelievable creative element in the writings of the Bab. I discovered this only because I'm familiar with Western philosophy. Otherwise, it was impossible for me to understand this. Writings of the Bab present a dialectical worldview. Dialectic, you know, is primarily the worldview of Hegel. And Marxists a little bit borrowed that. Not much. Marxists think that Marx is completely dialectical and so on. It's not so. But, um, but uh, dialectic is ultimately Hegelian philosophy. In discussion of Hegelian philosophy, we normally say that everything is a thesis that it is, at the same time, it's antithesis. And the struggle of the two lead to a synthesis, which is both thesis and antithesis, and at the same time, negation of both. It's a higher form of thesis, it's a higher form of antithesis. This is normally the way that dialectic is mentioned. And it's a very superficial way of discussing dialectic. Dialectic in Hegel is one word, one concept. And that's a German word, of course, Hegel is writing in German. The word is Aufhebung, Aufhebung. The word Aufhebung in German has two opposite meanings. At the same time, Aufhebung, or if, if it is in the form of verb, Aufheben, means to cancel, to destroy, to negate, to abrogate. This is one of the meanings of of heaven. But at the same time, the word of heaven means to elevate, to exalt. So if you want to translate it in English, you have to say cancellation, I don't know, dash, something like that, elevation. In different languages, which are not related to German, it's difficult to find a word that at the same time is saying, and that was the whole point of dialectic. From the point of view of dialectic and Hegel, everything is dynamic and changes. The new stage of development is an aufhebung of the previous stage, in the sense that in appearance it is negation, destruction, cancellation of the previous stage, but in reality it is preservation of that which now has appeared in a higher form. That's why thesis and antithesis and then synthesis as being both of them. So the new stage of development is Different from the previous stage. In appearance, it is cancellation of that, destruction of that. But in reality, it is that same reality 
which has been exalted and has been preserved and presented in a higher form. This is the concept of dialectic. For, for Hegel, history is dialectical, and therefore it's moving towards perfection and truth in this way. Now, the point that I want to mention is that the Bob completely, miraculously, in an absolutely amazing creative fashion, he coined a particular term in Persian Bayan, which becomes the core principle of all his discussions of history and progressive revelation. That word is ertefa. Ertefa means simultaneously elevation, exaltation, and at the same time, it means cancellation, negation, destruction. When something mortafa' should, or something raf should, means that it is cancelled, it is negated. And that's the whole point of Persian Bayan. Persian Bayan says that each new revelation, for him the word of God is living. Because it is living, it grows and it develops. So the new form that it takes is ertefa, is exactly the same meaning that Hegelian of Hebung is Ertefa of the previous one. Namely, in appearance, it has abrogated the previous stage. The laws of the Persian Bayan are abrogations of the laws of the Quran. So apparently, it is negation, it is cancellation, it is destruction of previous stage. But in reality, it is that same truth. It is the Quran itself and the laws of Islam itself which have been preserved are now presented in a higher form. It is higher because humanity has become higher. Humanity's capacities has developed and advanced more. It's the same truth, but presents itself in a new way, in a higher form. The word that the Bob more, most frequently uses, he says in, the, in, a, in a way which is ashraf, in a higher form and so. But each religion becomes ertefa of previous religion. Discussing the Persian Bayan, he says that ertefa of Bayan is ascent to he whom God shall make manifest. Which means simultaneously the coming of he whom God shall make manifest and his word is ertefa of Bayan in the sense of it would be cancelled, of course, as the Bab says. When he came, then nothing of writings of the Bab are binding. None of them. Then whatever he says. But at the same time, it is the words of the Bab which has reached maturation, exaltation, elevation, perfection in the writings of the Bab. Maturation of each religion is a new religion. The example that the Bab constantly gives, each religion is a seed of a tree, that the manifestation of God plants it in the hearts of the believers. And it, this tree develops and grows. The first fruit of this tree becomes the first believer of the next revelation. Mullah Hussein Boshruye is the first fruit of the tree of Islam. Ali, the son of law of Prophet Muhammad, is the first fruit of Christianity. Humanity develops and religion is a living thing on the basis of development of humanity. Religions take new form. They are higher form of the previous religion, but it is the same truth. So for the Bab, if you look at laws of the Bab mystically, it is exactly the laws of the Quran. It's exactly the laws of Jesus. It's exactly the laws of Torah. It's exactly the laws of any other prophet of God. There is no difference. They are all one and the same. But at the same time, it is maturation, exaltation, elevation, perfection. Everything wants to attain its perfection. 
That is perhaps the second most frequently discussed element in Persian Bayan. Everything in the world, including nature, yearns achieving perfection. And the perfection of each word of God, each scripture of God, is the next ex- ex- uh, scripture of God. Because it is the ertefa of the previous one, of hebung of the previous one. It has always been so interesting to me that Iranian intellectuals, and to a large extent intellectuals of all developing societies, they are also um, mesmerized by concept of dialectic. To be intellectual means that you praise dialectic and you talk about dialectic and so on. And none of them ever knew that this 25 years old merchant of Shiraz emerging from Iran that in uh, before even the middle of 19th century he has brought his sophisticated dialectical philosophy that they didn't know at that time and they don't know even now. The concept of Bada is another important concept. I won't go into details about that. The Shia Islam is much more familiar with this concept. Bada technically means change in the will of God, alteration in the will of God. So God says that something would happen and then it doesn't. So God changes his will and so on. In the book of certitude, for instance, Baha'u'llah says that Noah a number of times said things and then Bada happened. It was, um, in Shia Islam, the seventh uh, Imam was supposed to be the, the elder son of the sixth Imam. But that didn't happen. And the, so this is a typical concept of, so another son became the seventh Imam. This is a typical concept of Bada in Shia Islam. In the visitation tablet for the Bab and Baha'u'llah, this word Bada also appears. But Guardian has translated that not as alteration, but as creation. Which, of course, literally also makes sense, because Bada means from Bada, from the beginning. Um, so Bada means really that reality emerges and starts and appears. But in the traditional way, it is the new way that God has said and it hasn't happened. Persian Bayan discusses the concept of Bada extensively. And I wish we had time to go into a lot of subtleties of spiritual points that, that he's making. Ultimately, Bada at individual level becomes the idea that you are never sure, and you should never sure of your faith. Namely, you should never become proud of the fact that you are devoting your life to the faith and humanity, and you are following all the laws and, you know, everything. This should not turn into pride, so that you be sure that you are safe. It's Bada is always possible. Namely, you can turn from light to the fire. And particularly that element of pride itself causes the possibility that this change happens. So the, we are all lucky if God is pleased with us, but we should never take this for granted and we, never we should become arrogant. The exact opposite is the case that if we have done so many evil things or somebody has been deprived of recognizing God, manifestation of God, and so on, we should never assume that this person is um, uh, is to be defined in this way. Because at any moment, bada can happen, and this person can become the ultimate acceptance by God, 
and subject of the pleasure of God. So that means humility before those who are, for example, not Baha'is or those Baha'is who are, in our judgment, are not very um, knowledgeable about the faith or not acting very much in accordance with the faith or not serving the faith and so on. We should never become arrogant or judgmental about them. It is God who can make this judgment. Nor to become arrogant about ourselves. And even if everything that we do would be for the faith, the whole life is devoted to that. It should be accompanied with a sense of humility that it is only out of grace of God that I am now part of this, um, this category. Uh, of uh, of uh, divine community that at any moment I can lose that. So that um, that concept, I wish I had time to explain it. A, a short reference to this concept, Baha'u'llah mentions that in the book of Certitude when he's talking about the conditions for search. Usually people call it tablet of seeker or something like that. Within that also Baha'u'llah mentions a reference to this concept. It's a very, very important concept. Never become arrogant, never become judgmental, neither about yourself nor about others. To see them as not people of God. Uh, we don't know. God knows and God makes judgment and everything can happen at, at any time for everybody. And, However, aside from these issues, when the Bab discusses Bada in Persian Bayan, after discussing those things, he discusses those things first. He says that God would not be worshipped by anything more than Bada, consciousness of Bada. The ultimate worship of God requires this consciousness of humility. That I won't be sure, neither about myself that I'm faithful, nor of others that they are not faithful. This is a supreme way that God can be worshipped, according to the Bible. But aside from this, Bada, of course, becomes historical again. So Bada becomes emergence of a new religion. When the manifestation of God appears, he has the authority to cancel, to abrogate every law, every word of God before. And therefore, this bada can take place until the manifestation of God is physically alive. At that time, bada is ending. Namely, if something legislated by manifestation of God, people after him cannot say that we should change this. Only a manifestation can do that. I want to mention uh, how much time is left. Oh, good. I want to mention a very, very important metaphor in the writings of the Bab, particularly in Persian Bayan, and the meaning of that, some of the most important implications of that. The point that the Bab makes is that the realm of religion, the realm of history, the realm of culture becomes the realm of unity. So far I was talking about the dual character, the, the dualistic aspect, the binary character, and therefore it requires, revelation required change, change of religion, progressive revelation. Now let's go back to the original element. Revelation as expressing the fact that the truth of everything is one and the same. This is the point that the Bob constantly makes it in Persian Bayon, constantly. From the point of view of the Bab, and he creates all these symbols in order to express it, everything is all things. All things, you know, in the Arabic uh, alphabetical letters are equivalent to particular numbers. So A is one, B is two, J is three, D is four, and the like. The Bab uses this in order to create symbols. The word for all things, kolleshe, all things 
becomes equal to 361, which is, by the way, the number of the year, days of the year, aside from intercalary days. So all things and also the whole year becomes 361. But 361 becomes reflection of 19 times 19. So 361 is 19 times 19. So everything becomes multiplications, as the Bob says, takasur, multiplications of 19. And here is the beauty of creativity of the Bob. 19 becomes also one. And this 19 becomes reflection, multiplications, reflection of the one. That one is the pure revelation of God. Is that letter B? Or is the point? This is the truth of the Bob. And the other 18 becomes letters of the living. So the first unit of the Bobby dispensation, which is the Bob, and the 18 letters of the living, they are really one. They are 19, but they are really one. Now, the point is that the word for one, wahed, the numerical value of the word wahed is 19. You know, when you write wahed is V, A, H, D. That's the way in Persian or Arabic you write it. Wahed, V, A, H, D. V is six, A is one, H is eight, D is four. Together it becomes 19. So one is at the same time 19. And this is the major point of the Bob. You have to understand the meaning. Otherwise, these, these things are all unimportant. Yes. The meaning is this, that in everything, you have to see the reflection of the one. This one, which is the pure revelation of God, which is the truth of the manifestation, which is the point. That is the truth of everything. Divine word, a religion, a divine revelation is a creative force. And so it brings into existence a civilization. All these believers are reflections of that point and the word of that point. And in all of them, nothing can be seen except the point. The Bob constantly comes back to this theme. He says that everything that in the civilization of Islam happens, it is Muhammad who is acting. In everything, you have to see Muhammad. Of course, the truth of Prophet Muhammad that is revealing. So he says, for example, in Islam or in Christianity or in any other religion, you have all these different people with different characters. This is the king, this is the judge, this is this, and this is farmer, cultivator. He mentions that in Persian Bayon as well. But his point is that these are the names of God. These are attributes of God. And these categories of the people in any spiritual civilization, they are reflections of this, they have these positions and so on, because they are reflecting divine attributes, which is the attributes of the point. And therefore it is by virtue of the point of the manifestation of God that these people are acting in this way. This is king because king is God. And king is the is the point. And this person is king in an Islamic society because this person shows allegiance and loyalty to Prophet Muhammad and Quran. The Bab says, let's see if one of these kings right now in Iran or any Islamic society start to deny Quran and say bad things about Prophet Muhammad and say how long his kingdom would, would last. He says all these clerics, they call him themselves a scholar, alim. Ulama is the plural. But alim is one of the names of God. Ultimate reflections of these different names of God is the point, who is now revealing manifestation through his creative words, is creating this civilization, this community. But in all of them, nothing can be seen except the manifestation. 
anybody who has any authority who does anything does that and can do that because of attribution and association of itself to the point. The cleric who comes and makes a judgment, passes a sentence to kill the Bab, the Bab explains that he's killing the Prophet Muhammad, but he can kill Prophet Muhammad right now, and Prophet Muhammad allows him to do that simply because he shows faith and respect and allegiance to Prophet Muhammad. It is because he shows in the Islamic world reverence for Islam and Quran that he has this power. Otherwise, nobody would pay attention to them. None of these clerics would have any, any, any power if they dissociate this attribution, this association with the Prophet. And now that Prophet has appeared again. But instead of becoming so happy and, um, and realizing the purpose of their existence by recognizing him, they put him into mountain of Maku. The Bible constantly says that if they, do, if they don't recognize him, ignore him, is okay. But they should not start to harm him. They should not start to kill and persecute his believers. And this is one of those elements that he wants to educate the Bobby community, not to repeat the same thing later, which I'll come back to that uh, later. So he says that if somebody made a claim to be he whom God shall make manifest, the Persian Mayan, and that he was not true, and he says, although this is impossible, it can never happen. The opposite of what others in different religions say, that they are sure that an imposter would appear, and they are ready for negative action and negative words about the imposter. The Bob says in Persian Bayan, although it is mohal, it is impossible that somebody who is not really he whom God shall make manifest would come and make such a claim. But he says if something like that happened and you did not believe in this person and he was not on the basis of this impossible assumption, he was not from God, you should respect him and love him because he is associating himself to the name of the beloved. And he absolutely prohibits any um, physical or linguistic uh, insult or um, act against this person. In other places, he says that state should assign a stipend for this person so that all his life would, would be happy because this person has attributed himself to the beloved. In Persian Bayan, constantly he says, Ejlalan le mahbubihem. Ezazan le mahbubihem. Out of respect and love for their beloved, the Babis should refrain to do anything negative for anybody who make a claim to be he whom God shall make manifest. You know, this is the culture of absolute religious tolerance that you can imagine. And this was part of um, the culture that he created. And of course, very little parts of the Bobby community who did not become Baha'i, it was okay if they don't become Baha'i. Problem is that they started to act exactly like Shia Islam. They started to insult Baha'u'llah or anybody who would make such a claim. They started to mention um, the necessity of, of this person to be killed. So the entire revelation of the Bab is condemnation of this behavior. And that by itself is sufficient proof, it doesn't require any other proof, that these people were totally opposed to the spirit of the Bab. They did not, and they never represented the spirit of the Bab. Even right now, a few Babis all over the world who conceal their identities, who exist, their whole concept of being a Babi is to attack the Baha'is and to insult Baha'u'llah. 
If the Bob and Bobby fate by Yan and so on is attacked, they never come to defend that. It is Baha'is who do that. But they have one preoccupation and that's constantly insulting Baha'i faith and Baha'u'llah. This is the exact, exact, exact opposite of everything that the Bab constantly says. Constantly. Okay, uh, before uh, we finish this, uh, this part, and uh, we are very behind as usual, um, I want to mention uh, a few implications of this. First of all, the Bob emphasizes that the Bob himself, as the point, as the one, he is matchless. He is the sun. All the believers are mirrors. There was some discussion in some internet groups right now. You know, there are a lot of discussions about the Bob because of birthday of the Bob. Apparently, they have been discussing who are the mirrors and which one, which people the Bob has assigned as mirrors and so on. I'm not part of any of these groups, uh, unfortunately. I don't have time, but two different people asked me the same question, which then I know that there is the same discussion going on in one of these. And I answered to both of them that the whole question is wrong. You read the Persian Bayan at least a hundred times. The Bob takes the occasion to emphasize all believers are mirrors without exception. And all of them are reflecting the son of the Bob. The Bab is the son of truth, which is being reflected in all believers. And his point is that none of these believers, none of these mirrors become identical with even existing at the level of the Bab. Letters of the living are very important in the Babi dispensation, but they are all non-existent at the level of the Bab. Let alone they want to become sharing some status with the Bab. Edward Brown, because he didn't know the writings of the Bab, has written a number of things like that. The followers of Mirza Yahya Azal, because they want to elevate Mirza Yahya Azal to the same station of the Bab, they also say these sort of things. Read Persian Bayan, there is no chapter of the Persian Bayan that the Bab does not emphasize this point, that none have any existence. Always, he says, does the sun in the mirror, is the same as the sun in heaven, sun in the sky? And he always says no. About even letters of the living, he says that the letters of the living, they are not important by themselves. That's why 19 becomes one. 19 is one because in 19 you have to see just the one. You shouldn't see themselves. The letters of the living by themselves are not important. In letters of the living, you have to see their common revelation, which is the Bob. That's the truth. The praise of the letters of the living is because of the revelation of the Bab. They are reflecting the Bab. Otherwise, if you look at themselves, then you are not in the realm of unity. And according to the Bab, this is the meaning of the unity of God. Unity of God means that God is one and you cannot um, join partners with God. From the point of view of the Bob, he historicizes this. The manifestation becomes reflection of this divine unity. And it is only manifestation, nobody else ever. All others become mirrors who are reflecting the Bob, and they don't exist. So for instance, one chapter of Persian Bayan talks about even letters of the living or all prominent figures. They are stars. And the Bob is the sun. When the sun is shining, there is no light in any star. They, they disappear. Only when this, the manifestation of God is not present, then these stars have some lights. And his point is this, that these mirrors, these stars have to remember that their light is no light. The, the light is from, from the Bab. 
At the moment that they see light from themselves and therefore they become arrogant, this becomes an obstacle for recognition of he whom God shall make manifest. And his point is that when he whom God shall make manifest, everybody becomes equal. All the Babis are equal. No distinction whatsoever. At that moment, nobody is part of light or part of fire. Nobody is faithful, nobody is disfaithful. It is by recognition or rejection of the new prophet of God that they would take a positive or negative spiritual station. All become equal. So the concept of the unity of God turns in the form of the supreme sovereignty of the manifestation of God. In everything and everyone, whatever the level of, this is the leader of the Bobby community, this is one of the letters of the living, and so they are all important, but they are all nothing as compared to the manifestation of God. And they have nothing from themselves. In all of them, the same light of the manifestation is there. Manifestation is acting within them, through them. Their authority, whatever they do, is because of the manifestation. And this becomes a sociological concept also in varieties of ways. I mentioned two implications of this sociological concept and we, um, we go for questions uh, or directly to lunch, I don't know. Um, the first one, Sociological consciousness emerged in the West by discovering the idea that although individuals make their own choices, but they do these choices in the context of a common culture, a common society, social norms, values. And so each action really is reflection of that common society culture through a specific characteristics of these individuals. If you look at Persian Bayan, Persian Bayan gives us a mystical sociological consciousness. In every dispensation, whatever is happening, this is partly a reflection of choices of these people. So this person becomes a scholar, this person becomes king, this person becomes farmer. But they all do that. Their authority, their actions are reflection of the point. In all of them, the reflections of the point an association with the point and the laws of that point and the culture presented in the word of God in that spiritual civilization, which is operating principle. The second sociological conception, which is amazing, the Bab in Persian Bayan constantly tells us why people fail to recognize a new manifestation of God. Among other things, which some of them maybe we should discuss later on, among other things is, he says that when the religion starts, manifestation of God appears as a normal human being without much power. The person recognizes manifestation despite this lack of power, lack of might, lack of recognition. And of course, this person has a high spiritual station. The first believer believes when nobody is believing. And believing this person means persecution, losing your life, losing your property. But he says as time goes on and the community is created by this spiritual force, now people see that everybody believes and everybody is glorifying the manifestation. Everybody is going to Mecca for pilgrimage. And therefore, going to Mecca, following these Islamic laws, performing uh, fasting or prayer or all other things, this becomes a basis of pride, of prestige, of iftikhar, the word that he uses. You exalt yourself, you become important, by showing reverence to the prophet. He says that you are now following the precepts of this religion because you see everybody else is doing. And because you see that these religious concepts and so on are associated with power. For the Bob, what is happening is that you take the fact that society now 
have consensus about the truth of Quran and Islam. You take this social element and project it to the reality and the beginning of religion. And you assume that when Quran is started, when Prophet Muhammad was started, also this level of might and so on was the intriguing characteristic there. And therefore you think that anybody who would listen to the, see the Muhammad or listen to the word of Quran immediately would recognize that this is power, that this is Great, that you have to accept it. And then they see the Bob. They see the letters of the living of the Bob. And the Bob doesn't waste any time to talk about the letters of the living, that how in appearance they were with regard to Mullah Hussein. He says that he, his shirt didn't have buttons and he didn't have a shoe. With regard to f his food, he says that his food was the leaves of lettuce. Once I mentioned this, but mistakenly I said lotus. Lettuce. For Godus, he says that Godus didn't have a shirt. People see these people deprived of any appearance of might or prestige and power and see the Bob himself. And they see that, therefore, this cannot be true. In their imagination, prophet of God is defined in terms of projection of this social reality of might and so on to the beginning of the religion. And because they do this, they are, they fail. From the point of view, it's not that these people want not to know. It's not that they are vicious people who want to reject the prophet of God. No, they want to believe. They, they, the Bible constantly emphasizes that they mean well. They want to act on the basis of the will of God, but it is their lack of knowledge. It is the fact that they follow and imitate others. It is that the fact that they don't think for themselves is that the fact that they are projecting this social element and forgetting the truth and the beginning of religion that they make these mistakes. And so the solution is not to demonize the non-believers, but to understand that they also are trying their best in order to, to be for the sake of God. But the problem is imitating others. The problem is lack of a spiritual insight, understanding correctly. Persian Bayan becomes a discourse to correct these mistakes and, and these distorted conceptions. And so, as my last word, um, one of the sociologists, I'm, I'm a student of sociology, that I always loved is Durkheim. And Durkheim is perhaps the greatest in sociology of religion. And in sociology of religion in Durkheim, Durkheim believes that sacred is the social element. And really is the represent symbolic representation of society which takes the form of God or different totem or different items and so on. We worship this God, glorify this God because really we are worshiping society, the power of society, the absolute control of the society, the majesty of society over individual. Now, if you take that insight and read now Persian Bayan, which is written a long time before, of course, Durkheim, you see that for the Bab, the phenomenology of recognition or rejection of the new prophet of God takes place because people reduce the sacred to the social element. And in their imagination, they allow that the power of society, consensus of society, that this defines for them what really religion is. And then their expectation of the new prophet of God is to become fulfillment of this. So they think that if the Bob is from God and he 
um, he um, mentions, reveals his words, immediately everybody has to figure out and all the clerics have to bow down and say that, oh yes, this is the word of God. Because they think if they were at the time of Prophet Muhammad, and Prophet Muhammad now would recite a verse, they all do that. And they would do that. Because if they know that this is Prophet Muhammad, they would do that. And therefore they think that if a person is from God, is Qa'im or any other person, also their immediate reaction must be that if it is true. And they forget the fact that all of the people who were alive at the time of Muhammad, at the time of Jesus, at the time of any of these prophets of Muhammad, they came and brought these divine revelations. People ridiculed them. People rejected them. People persecuted them. Very tiny number of people recognized them, and they were persecuted, and so on. It is later on that for various reasons, sometimes the use of sword, that the society comes to believe. And then this new imagination takes place. For the Bab, we have to delete these imaginations. And always consider the beginning, the source of revelation. And look at the revelation by itself. Not the fact that others and society approves or disapprove, this cleric approves or disapprove. Just look at the prophet, the words of the prophet, and decide on that basis. Um, maybe we should have a few questions. Yes. If you please explain that, I have two questions that are related to one another. One is that we understand that perhaps uh, His Holiness the Bob's wife, Hadija, perhaps, was the first that believed in him. Seems like from Nabil's narrative that he, she recognized his station. Could it be that in a male-dominated society that this was just too much to bear and Mullah Hussein is claimed to be the first? And then what role did really Qudus play? Seems like even the Bab talks to Mullah saying that he has been communicating the Qudus. I don't know for how long, but wouldn't that make Qudus then the first, even before Mullah saying? And then, since numbers matter to the Bab so much, when he goes on pilgrimage and he has 19 lambs that he sacrifices, nine in his own name and seven in the name of Qudus and three in the name of his servants, why would he cho choose these numbers in that fashion? Did it mean anything? And I understand that Baha'u'llah later did confirm the station of Wadus uh, being the last point, in a sense, of the Uhra. And also, that Wadus at one time claims that the Bab is revealing verses through him, that Mullah Hussein recognized that, that there was a meeting that they had. Did that ever happen, that the Bab could or, and would do such a thing? Uh, yes, this is a huge uh, topic, and a number of things that you mentioned were the issues that I was discussing in order to reject. Um, namely, the Bab um, affirms the spiritual stations for a lot of uh, believers, but the idea, the moment that this idea turns into making them partners with the Bab, or having them having this intrinsic uh, station of themselves, he, he completely rejects. So a lot of these ideas, as I mentioned, uh, the sources of that are non-familiarity with the writings of the Bab. So people have said different different things. In Persian Bayan, the Bab says that if the letters of the living, the light was from themselves, they should have been letters of the living and light before the declaration of the Bab. But he says that, of course, it wasn't. It was created when the Bab revealed himself to these people, and through recognition of the Bab, they became letters of the living. All of them are reflections of the, the Bab. Having said that, um, although nobody is at the station of the, of the Bab, nobody. Um, but then after the Bab, the letters of the living have special uh, status. The highest person after the Bab in the dispensation of the Bab is Tahere. This is one of those points which are not well known. Qudus is the one that 
has been mentioned and uh, discussed frequently. Um, the Bab himself, in one of his tablets that I discovered in Haifa, gives the name of the letters of the living. This is very important because what is the name of the letters of the living is a matter of dispute. Uh, followers of Yahya Azal frequently have mentioned that other people have been letters of the living. For instance, they say, say Javad Karbalai was one of the letters of the living. So they don't believe in the same letters of the living, but they don't give a full name. Even Mirza Yahya Azal, when asked by Edward Brown, he refuses to give the full, full name. Uh, he didn't know. Uh, but, uh, the identity of the letters of the living have been a matter of lots of dispute. I discovered this tablet of the Bab in which he gives the names of the letters of the living, which, by the way, fits the list that we have in Dawn Breakers. But the order in Dawn Breakers, that order, of course, is completely arbitrary. Uh, so it is correct that the, the first one is Mullah Hussein and the last one is Rodus, but then, and the second one is correct too, Mullah Ali Bassami, in terms of order, the rest of them are all arbitrary and inaccurate. Um, but the names are correct. But when the Bab wants to give the name of these 18 letters of the living, he presents them in this way. And he says that, and the name of 17 of them is this, followed by 17 names. When I read this for the first time, because he makes 18 letters of the living as 17 and 1, so when he is giving us this, the name of the 17, I knew that this one should be different, and this one is very unique. So I glimpsed at the name. I didn't read one by one and so on. Immediately after that, the Bob says, God took the essence of these 17 and placed it in this one soul who became recognizer uh, as the 18. And I was really, by this time, didn't know what to do. I mean, spiritually, I was so... Because one of the letters of the living, the Bob is describing really as equal to all the other 17 letters combined. And who is this one who has the essence of all 17 present within this person? And, well, the immediate uh, candidates would be Qudus Tahereh Mullah Hussein. So I went back to the 17. First, I looked for Qudus. Qudus is there. Then I said, Mullah Hussein, Mullah Hussein is there. Everybody is there except Tahiri. And of course, after that, he says that the Bab continues and identifies Tahiri. The Bab writes this in Chehrik, so it is one of the later writings of the Bab. And uh, this shows the perception that the Bab had of Tahiri. Your statement related to the first question about Khadija Khanum and the male dominated. Um, the male dominated part does not play any role here because the way the Bab glorified Tahereh, who is a female, completely defies that, that principle. So whatever the answer to that first part, it is not because of concern with male dominated <coughs> society. So, other places, the Bab, the way he talks about Tahereh is that Tahereh is beyond the limits of understanding of the Babis. He says he is, she is the forbidden truth of knowledge. And he, and he tells the Babis, leave her alone. Namely, you don't understand her. So the Tahereh is a category by herself. Nobody can be compared. It's not a matter of comparison. When you want to compare, then Qudus is the highest. And that is categorical in the writings of the Bab. Persian Mayan, um, when he is talking about pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina, because really Qudus was the only person, together with Ethiopian servant, who engaged in real pilgrimage. As he says, 70,000 Muslims went to pilgrimage in that year, but none of them 
really engage in pilgrimage. They, they did something, but that was not definition of pilgrimage and the truth of pilgrimage from the point of view of God. From the point of view of God, this clay is important because it symbolizes and is associated with the manifestation, with the word of God, with the divine will. And that divine will is now present in the form of the Bab. And so the real pilgrimage means to be around the Bab, loving the Bab, and recognizing the Bab. That is a pilgrimage. In my judgment, reading Persian Bayon, the reason, the main reason that the Bab went to Mecca and Medina was to unveil the truth of pilgrimage to the Muslim world. That the act that you are doing is just a symbol of the true pilgrimage. And now the reality of the pilgrimage has appeared. He wanted to give the knowledge, the hidden knowledge, the truth of Islam. But of course, majority, vast, vast majority of the pilgrims, they couldn't recognize this and they failed to understand. But Rodus is the one who was really the first one who truly was engaged in real pilgrimage. And so the Bab talks about 152 at that time with regard to Quddus. I talked about 152 before. And I believe, and this is just my hypothesis, it's personal hypothesis, when he's using 152 in the Persian Bayan about Quddus, he means 152 days and nights of this travel of pilgrimage that Qudus was in presence of the Bab. And so he, he was revolving around the Bab for 152 days and nights. And this becomes symbol, each one of these days becomes symbol of one of the early mirror of the Babi religion. And so Qudus becomes of an unusual status and, and so on. So, um, but Qudus is by himself, Tahere, by herself, they are nothing. They are reflections of the Bab. And so any attempt to make these as equivalent to the Bab, or the writings equivalent to the writings of the Bab, all of these are absolutely not only opposed by the writings of the Bab, categorically all the time, but by the words of Baha'u'llah and words, words of Abdul Baha, but as reflections of the Bab, as a fact that their will was completely annihilated in the will of the Bab, therefore their words were also mirroring the divine words. Their words were sacred. And Mullah Hussein recognized that. But it doesn't mean that this was the same as the Bab or the same authority as the Bab and so on. All those ideas are non-Babi, non-Baha'i ideas when I say non-Babi, namely non-writings of the Bab. Otherwise, a lot of the Babis at that time, they were, they were not familiar with the writings of the Bab. A lot of ideas from Shia Islam and Sufism and so on, they speculated things. Um, <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> this is the hierarchy. And yet the words of none of these things are binding. There is a chapter in Persian Bayan title of the chapter is La Yajuzul Amal Illa Bi Asar Nukte. It is not permitted to act on the basis of any word except the words of the Nukte point, namely the Bab. And he explains there that unlike Islam, that binding words were in the form of different writings which successive people revealed it. First it is Quran, then there are prayers of Prophet Muhammad, then there are, there are commentaries by uh, the Imams and after that by scholars and gates and so on. He says that in this revelation, all these types of writings are going to be re revealed directly by the, by the Bab himself in its highest form of expression. And he says that these words by the Bab are binding. None of the letters of the living therefore would reveal any of these things. And he says that from the time of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, setting of, of the Bab, namely his martyrdom, 
till the coming of him whom God shall make manifest, there would be no more any binding words. In other words, I mean, it can't be more explicit. It's not that it is implied and so on. It's absolutely. And he says the same thing in other parts of... These are parts of the Babi religion that are not familiar to people because they want to understand the Babi religion in terms of Islam or other religions. Then, of course, other than the Bab, other people also would have their own binding words. From the point of view of the Bab, within the dispensation of the Bab, it is only the Bab who, who has binding words that you have to act on the basis of the words of the Bab. But no act is permitted uh, except on the basis of the writings of the Bab. And between the setting of the sun of the Bab and the dawning of the sun of he whom God shall make manifest, Asar farziye murtafa. The exact statement of the Bab. The binding word is murtafa. That word irtifa is cancelled. Asar uh, farziye means the works that are farz. Namely, they are binding. They are um, authoritative and so on. So the Bab is very clear. The Babis are not very clear. And we don't read the writings of the Bab, so we are also any attempt to make anybody similar to or identical or sharing the session of the Bab is absolute rejection of the whole conception of divine unity, according to Persian Bayan. And he says this again and again and again and again in Persian Bayan. At the same time, after that, in the shadow of the Bab, Tahereh, Qudus, Mullah Hussein, Mullah Ali Bahasamin, these are extremely important. Um, before we have the go for the lunch, the part about um, Khadija, the wife of, of the Bab, this is an issue that has become a common point. Everybody talks about this issue and speculates about it. The story, which even in the movie Gate, there is there. Whether the story is true or false is not clear. So the idea that this whole story is authentic or not, we don't know. It's not in any of the uh, writings. And in some of the ways that it has been presented, it has been presented as the night of the declaration of the Bible, which cannot be. So whether it has happened in that way or not, it may. Definitely it was not in the night of declaration, as one of the sources says that, uh, one of the relatives of the Bab who is mentioning this. But, um, but it might have happened. Having said that, there is no doubt, and even Baha'u'llah testifies to this, that the wife of the Bab is the first person who recognized the extraordinary spiritual powers of the Bab. But this does not mean translating this in the sense that therefore he is the gate of the imam or he, he is the imam or he is a new prophet of God and things like that. Those are interpretations and categories and translations which is another issue. But understanding, just seeing the Bab, a person who is close to the Bab, could understand this is the spiritual power, the uniqueness of the Bab. And Khadija Khanum was the first one who recognized this, and Baha'u'llah testifies to that. But from this jumping to the conclusion that therefore she recognized the Bab in those ways and so on, is not accurate. And it is Mullah Hussein Boshriye. In Persian Bayan, so many times, the Bab talk about the city of Shiraz. And he says that it is famous as the city of knowledge. They called it in Iran, they had different names for different cities, Darul El. And he says that yet none of the citizens of Shiraz could recognize him. The only persons who recognize him, 
were people who came from Karbala, traveled from Karbala. They came to Shiraz and they recognized the Bab. The fact that nobody in the city of Shiraz recognized the Bab, and the Bab uses that in order to make a statement that how the people of Shiraz, you know, spiritually are not awake. Um, he repeats that a number of times in Persian Bayan. And of course, these people who were people who were searching for the beloved, searching for the promised one. They left their home, they, everything. I mentioned about Odus and Mullah Hussein um, and their, uh, their lack of anything um, in terms of physical, material, even you know, the way they were dressed and, and things like that, because they were intoxicated with God. They wanted to know the, pro the beloved. Nothing else was important. They left. They were the ones who were seekers. They were the seekers of truth. Others became important because the letters of the living now go and share the message of God with them. They go to their cities and tell them that something has happened. It's qualitatively different from these letters of the living who are unique. Even the wife of the Bab was not part of this form of. So both statements are true. In one sense, Khadija Khanum is the first one who recognized the Bab in a spiritual fashion. And at the same time, of course, Mullah Hussein Boshuye is absolutely the first one who recognized the Bab in terms of uh, Sheila would say the last word and then we go for lunch. wonder if you could say anything of uh, what you know. Yes, uh, most of the letters of the living actually were not alive at the time of the revelation of Baha'u'llah. Uh, about nine of the letters of uh, living, they were killed in Tabarsi upheavals, and a lot of them later on were, were killed in the year uh, 1852 when there was this massacre of, of the Babis going on. But a few of them remained alive. One of them, of course, not only accepted Baha'u'llah, was one of the first one to accept Baha'u'llah. His name is Mullah Baghir Tabrizi. This is a very important person. He is the one who asked the Bab about he whom God shall make manifest when he appears, how we should get to know him, and so on. And that tablet of the Bab, is probably the most important tablet of, 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 of the Bible, in which he says that if you were not one of the letters of the living, I would have assigned a punishment for you, that you dare to ask this illegitimate question. And he says that he whom God shall make manifest should be known only by himself and his verses, nothing else. And there he says that um, you should not become veiled from he whom God shall make manifest through the first uh, unit, the first Bobby unities, that means the Bob and all the 18 letters of the living. Namely, if somebody make a claim and the Bob and all the other 18 letters of the living that the address is himself is one of the letters of the living, all of them come and reject this person, say that no, he's imposter. The Bob says don't listen to any of them. The only way that you have to make a judgment is independently look at the person and the words of this person. That's the only way that you can judge. And uh, says that uh, uh, you should not become veiled from recognizing him by anything in the Bayan. Namely, the idea that this statement of the Bayan implies that the manifestation should be in this way or should come on that year and so on. And this contradicts, for instance, Baha'u'llah, therefore we don't accept Baha'u'llah. The Bab categorically, and he says this thing in Persian Bayan tens of times as well. You have to pay attention to none of this. The only way that you have to recognize the manifestation is through his being and his words. That's the way he criticizes the Muslims of the time. 
He says that they listen to the clerics around them or their knowledge or understanding or interpretations of this tradition or that Quranic statement. Whereas all of these were binding because it was the word of God. And he says, now I am revealing the words of God like an ocean. In Islam, 23 years, there was one book of revelation, the Quran. The Bab says in a matter of one week, he says if the secretary can continue in two days and nights, but otherwise, in a matter of one week, I would reveal divine verses equivalent of the Quran. He says it's the, the ocean of revelation is taking place, and yet these people are rejecting it. Everything else that they say that they consider a proof becomes important ultimately because it becomes somehow through different stages associated with revelation of the word of God. And that, that thing has come in this mighty way and they are asking questions and so on. And so he says to the Babis, this is one of the metaphors of the Bab, he repeats in Persian Bayan so many times. He says that the Babis are these fish, fishes in the ocean and the water is he whom God shall make manifest. The, everything that they have is because of the revelation of him who shall make manifest, but in the form of the Bab, because the Bab is Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah, in the form of the Bab, has revealed all these things. And this is the water through which these Babi fishes are alive. And yet, they are asking of him. They are questioning. They don't know that everything that they have is nothing but reflection of, 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 uh, him, what I was discussing, I don't remember what was the question, and I don't know what is my answer. So let's have the, let's have the lunch. Uh, when we come back, I'll answer questions.